Good morning to you, brothers and sisters. Morning. Really, really feel happy to be here. Uh, seven weeks for two weeks for at least. <laughs> that seems a very, very long time. But I'm really rejoicing that I'm able to be here. I had a wonderful time um, abroad, and I was given the opportunity and the privilege also of bring the word to two different congregations. And um, based on the response, they were blessed. So all honor and glory to Jesus Christ. But what blessed my heart most of all while I was away happened yesterday. I was in my middle with some church folks. I had to transport them in a church bus to a retreat center. And uh, while I was there, a lady just came up to me and she said, Good afternoon, sir. I said, Good afternoon. She said, um, Are you affiliated with those church people here in the bus? I said, No, you know, I'm just the driver. So, but what she said next really brought a smile on the face. So she said, um, Don't you think it's time that you accept Jesus Christ? Uh, <laughs> I said, No, that's it. <laughs> And that really warmed my heart. Yes. To know that persons are still out there really doing the work of an evangelist. Reminding persons that they need to accept Jesus Christ in their lives. So, you know, um, I, I, I thought about it. You know, I, I thought first of all to, to ask her. Why should I accept Jesus Christ? I didn't want the word to be hard. So I just told her that, no, and I have accepted it, and I'm preaching also, and she said, oh, amen, I'll do it. So that was it. But brothers and sisters, when we look in our society today, one of the things we realize is that men, most of us, you know, we do women too, but men are really outside against the things of God. And let me say, humanity, the majority of humanity is hostile against the things of God. So when you mention God to them, they will come up with all kinds of responses that they don't think that they should have. Some persons, they go as far as to say, there is a dead God. I am my own man, my own woman. I am free to do whatever I please. And it, it, it is really disheartening. Some persons you will hear, they, they say that, well, I've never stolen anything. I've never told a lie. You know, I don't kill anybody. And I, I'm a God-fearing person. So I, I think I'm okay. They don't see why they should really invite Jesus Christ in their lives. But brothers and sisters, I'm here to share with you all, and I should say a very warm welcome to those who are new with us by Facebook and, um, and YouTube, that we must realize, brothers and sisters, and when we quote this scripture all the way that there's a way that seems right unto a man. But if you look at man's track record, it always ends in death. No matter how you package it and repackage it, it always ends in death. In the international news, if you tune in on a daily basis, you just hear about wars and devastating results to both inhabitants and the creation itself. Try as mankind as they may, they just cannot find peace. They go to all of our own here and they try to come up with all kinds of things to garner peace amongst warring nations. But most of the times when you hear they say that we are arrived at a truce. It is just something. 
So what we find out is that when mankind try to initiate peace, it is always because blood is being shed. And it is always the blood of their enemies, so called. But I'm here to tell you, friends, that the man Jesus Christ, Yeshua, who came on this earth, the scripture tells us that in the beginning, the word became flesh. And that word was, is, and always will be. So he is God. Jesus Christ put on flesh, came here on earth, so that he could redeem mankind. So what he did in order for us to experience peace, instead of killing off the dead, he shed his own blood, the total opposite to what man is trying to do to achieve peace. So for man to have peace, he goes to war and he, he brought me to love. And you have to surrender. And they call that peace. But Jesus Christ, shed his own blood, paying the penalty for all sins, so that all the hostilities that were there could be wiped away, so that his love, which has been shed abroad in our hearts, is what is keeping us going on at this time. If you turn to Isaiah chapter 59, we will just read a verse. Isaiah 59 and verse 8. And it tells you the state of mankind. Who okay, goes there? Isaiah 59 and verse 8. The prophet says, The way of peace they do not know. There is no justice in their hearts. They have turned them into crooked roads. No one who walks along them we know peace. Let me read it again. The way of peace they do not know. There is no justice in their paths. They have turned them into crooked roads. No one who walks along them will know peace. I mean, told us, you know, from the beginning, but God dealt with that. It says in verse 2, your iniquities have separated you from your God. Your sins have hidden his face from you so that he will not hear. But through Jesus Christ, that bridge has been gapped. And we now are able to go directly to Jesus Christ. In Psalm 1, brothers and sisters, it tells us here, that we who know Jesus Christ has been transformed. And it says in Psalm 1 verse 1, Blessed is the one who does not walk in step with the wicked, or stand in the way that sinners see, or sit in the company of mothers. But see what their delight is. But whose delight is in the law of the Lord, and who meditates on his law day and night. Verse 3. That person is like a tree planted by streams of water, which yields its fruit in season, and whose leaf does not wither, and whatever they do prospers. That is really what we want the society out there to understand. That when you ask God, to join you in living out your purpose here on earth. You are going to be blessed. And blessed here can mean happy also. So it says, happy is the one who does not walk in step with the wicked. And that is what Jesus Christ has saved us from. Because it continues in verse 4. It says, not so the wicked. They are like chaff that the wind blows away. Therefore, the wicked will not stand in the judgment, but are sinners in the assembly of the righteous. 
For the Lord watches over the way of the righteous, but the way of the wicked leads to destruction. But the scripture tells us here that Jesus Christ came here on earth not to condemn, but to save. So I'm here to remind us, brothers and sisters, that the gospel that we were asked to proclaim is not a gospel of doom. It's a gospel about a good news, a good news that we who weren't a people once upon a time, Jesus Christ through his shed blood has now made us a people and we can now become children of God. Amen? So, our focus, you know, I, I hear people complaining all the while that the only thing they hear us preaching about is the love of God. We're not talking about sin. We don't need to talk about sin, brothers and sisters. Us, as human beings, we were formed in sin and we were shaped in iniquity. Every single human being knows what sin is. Because God has made us with their conscience. We know that we should not sin. We know that we should not lie. Because we have seen what happens when we do all of those stuff. What we do not know is that God loves us no matter what condition we are in. And that is why we need to be telling people this good news. God is not concerned with our past lives. Because he has dealt with that already. That is why he sent Jesus Christ here in the flesh to conquer sin for us so that in him we may truly live in life that is fulfilled, that is going to lead to our eternity. And you know, one of the things I hear some people say too is that, you know, when we talk about, um, you know, we, we know that we are saved now, you know, we, we, we kind of, I say by saying, you know, it's, it's assurance that we have of our salvation. And it's like some people say, no, because you don't know that you are saved until Jesus Christ comes. But I don't think my God would really put my mind in that frame where I would be on needles every single day. Don't really know if I am saved or not. Because the Apostle Paul tells us that there is no, no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. You know once you accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, you know your position. No. It is impossible for us to save ourselves, but Jesus Christ says, with us that's an impossibility, but with God that is possible. And God has done that. So we need to let people understand, brothers and sisters, that Jesus Christ is our peace. That's the title of the message today. Jesus Christ is our peace. One of our past international musicians, Peter Tosh, he coined some words. And when he looked at society, he was saying that he doesn't want the peace that the world has to offer. What we would rather have is equal rights and justice. So the peace that mankind tries to broke up by killing off one another. There's no equal rights and justice aligned to that kind of peace. But with the peace that Jesus Christ offered to us, there's always equal rights and justice. Because the scripture reminds us that God is no respect to a person. God does not look at us based on the, the, the accolades that we have got. You know, I remember once I went, I think it was Maurice graduation, a nursing graduation, and the, the keynote speaker came. And before he came up, they introduced him. And I timed it. It took 10 minutes for them to introduce him because he was doctor of so and so and all different kinds of accolades. 
There are more things that he had achieved in life. And yet when people talk about Jesus Christ, it's as if he's just a mere person. But we know, brothers and sisters, that Jesus Christ, the Son of God, he is our elder brother. He's our high priest. He's our soon coming king. He is the perfect sacrifice for us. He is the one who has broken every single chain that the enemy has tried to put in our way. And that is why we can live a life of rejoicing. That is why, brothers and sisters, we can hold our heads up high. And we do not have to walk with our heads slumped down. You know, brothers and sisters, um, I. I, when I was coming back, I had a piece of equipment, I think worth a thousand dollars US. And you know, they, they say that was a highly man. You know, that's not the way you want, you know. And um, I tried, and going to like this, I tried all the different kinds of me, but it's like these people say, you know, see, that is the meaning of every time. <laughs> so, I have to say, Lord, I'm just going to just put it in my backpack and allow the chip to fall to everything. I wouldn't believe in brothers and sisters that when I came to Norman and the airport, and, um, I decided that I was going into the green line. I was going into the red line that says, you have things to be clear. So I went into the red line, and when I went up to the the custom officer. The first thing I realized was that she was left handed. So I said, he was a very good hand. And she said, he was left handed. I said, yes. But then I saw her, she had a little piece of hair. I said, that is not worth a left handed person. So I took out a nice pen. <laughs> and I gave it to her. And, and, and she said, oh, nice. Okay. So, um, you know, she said, oh, and she, she was um, tutoring somebody, I think, that person had just got the job. So, um, she said, you know, a suitcase, man. So I put up a suitcase and I moved it. And she was teaching that it was just things to give away. So she, she looked at it and she said, you know, you things like these, don't worry about it, that. Just, so, I took, I was taking up the other suitcase. She said, oh, you are okay, man, you are okay. I should have stopped there and said, I have a good time, sir. I said, you're not me. <laughs> so I tell you, my brothers and sisters, when you allow God to fight your battles, you will attain that peace that you are grasping. Amen? Oh. Right? Yes. I am going to just remind us to our sisters. Just for a little that what we find out is that mankind, all of us are not the same. We have differences. Whether it is in our religion, you know, whether it is in politics, whether it is or the color of our skin or culture, we all have differences. And differences can be good. Differences can be good. Just like if you have plans, if you have just if you have 10 plants at home and all of them are the same color and, and the same everything, it doesn't bring any little oomph in your life. You need some diversity. So differences are, are, are nice. But what we find out, brothers and sisters, is that with the differences that humankind has always brings hostility. Because everybody thinks that they are right, everybody thinks that they are better than they are. And I can remember the, the church that I came to. Our man told us that we were the only two church. And I remember when I went to the country like to spend a weekend with my relatives out there. I don't think I had a relationship with Jesus Christ. Because I was always, you know, I, was, I, I used to just sit down and watch the church people going to church on Sunday. And I was saying, oh my. 
Christians because they are not of the same denomination. Their theology may be a little different. Although they are accepting Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. What Paul here is reminding us is that Jesus Christ has made all of us alive. It doesn't matter whether you're a Baptist, you're a Catholic, you're a Pentecostal. But because of certain differences, we think that we have no relationship with Jesus Christ. I remember once I was conducting a funeral, and a lady here came, and um, before we had that name change, she came and she looked at the program, and she said, um, I don't pass the year. I said, yes. She says, um, I see the name, Church of God. You know, um, are you a Holy Ghost church? So I said, what do you mean by that? <laughs> and she said, are you filled with the Holy Ghost? And I said, yes, because that's a promise that was made to us. That when we accept Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior, then we will be given with the Holy Spirit. So we all have the Holy Spirit. So you say that, that I mean, man. <laughs> you get the extra outpouring <laughs> of the Spirit. You're speaking thoughts. <laughs> and I said, well, please not everybody get that deep. And I, you know, went to First Corinthians chapter 12, and you know, and I read it, you know, to say, well, it is the Holy Spirit who decides who gets what and, and all the things. She's still, yes, 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 but. So we use the differences that we have with, to cause hostility amongst each other. So instead of us coming together, enjoying a family relationship, we are there bickering about whether, you know, you are right and this is the true way to go. There are some persons who say that uh, if you do not call Jesus Christ by his name, you are sure. And uh, to call God that way, you have no luck, no part with it. But I know, brothers and sisters, that God uses physical things here to really rivet in our minds how we operate. And I know as a fact that when I read the New Testament, and never see one of Jesus' disciples called in Yeshua. The always teacher of our lives. Yes. God rest my, my father, my physical father. So his name was Roxroy Clark Campbell. And I have never ever called him that. It's always that. And when I say that, he didn't answer. <laughs> so who are you going to say? God says that he is my father. How are you going to say when I say Abba Daddy? He's not going to answer. If I call him Yahweh, he's not the father. No. Because our earthly fathers, we have utmost respect for them. So we're always up standing. That is what we have for God. So we don't waste any time bickering about what God's name is. We just know that without God orchestrating the things in the world, we are doomed. And the hostility that we have between ourselves is going to cause our damnation. But thanks be to God, Jesus Christ is our peace. Let, let us continue in verse 6. It says, And God raised us up with Christ and seated us with him in the heavenly realms in Christ Jesus. In order that in the coming age he might show the incomparable riches of his grace expressed in his kindness to us in Christ Jesus. For it is by grace you have been saved through faith. And this is not from yourselves. It is the gift of God. Not by works. So that no one can go. For we are God and work. Created in Christ Jesus to do good works. Which God prepared in advance for us to do. Therefore, verse 11. So Paul here is reminding us that we were coming from a place where we were not the people, and God through his son Jesus Christ afforded us the opportunity that we are now sons and daughters of God. So Paul 
And here in verse 11, he's going to tell us now that because of what Jesus Christ did, although we were physical Jews, but because we are accepting that shed blood of Jesus Christ, we are now reconciled as sons and daughters of the Most High. Verse 11. Therefore, remember that formerly you who are Gentiles by birth and called uncircumcised by those who call themselves the circumcision which is done in the body by human hands. Remember that at that time you were separated from Christ, excluded from citizenship in Israel and foreigners to the covenants of the promise, without hope and without God in the world. But because God is love, brothers and sisters, God would never ever leave us at that place. Verse 20, but now in Christ Jesus, you who once were far away have been brought near by the blood of Christ. And it matters not what your life was before. The blood of Jesus Christ is powerful that it washes of any hostility. Remember what Paul says that the carnal mind is hostile against God and cannot please him. So often by ourselves, we won't even try to search for that because it is not in our daily to do that. But Jesus Christ came and changed that. Jesus Christ has remade us. We are now a new creation. That is why we can shout hallelujah. Because we understand where we were coming from. You know, I, I love that song that tells us that you know, we are asking God to show me where you brought me from and where I could have been. But God knows all of that, and that is why He set out to do what He did. That is why He set out to do what He did, brothers and sisters. And I'm here rejoicing. So, all those persons out there in the world, who think that they are the rulers of their own destiny, it is truly going to lead you to destruction if you follow that path. It is going to lead you into destruction. We have to come to that position, brothers and sisters, where we realize that our human nature is hostile against the divine nature of God. And the only way that can be removed is by us understanding that Jesus Christ paid the penalty for our sins several hundred years ago, removing that hostility, not just between us and our fellow man, but between us and God. Jesus Christ has broken down that wall of hostility between us all brothers and sisters. And now we are able to truly join fellowship with all who proclaim Jesus Christ to be their, their king. In John chapter 10, we see where Jesus Christ, he had sent out some 72 um, of the disciples and they came back very, you know, joyful that they had they done a whole lot of miracles and things that astounded people. But then John, turned to Jesus, and he was saying, and this is going to show you the hostility in respect of the friends. He was saying to Jesus Christ, that you know that there's a man we hear about, a man over there, who is doing things in your name, and he's not a part of us. So it's like he was saying, you know, we need to a shot of that man. Because for you to Refer to Jesus this morning, you have to be a part of the Jewish congregation. And Jesus said in verse 16 of John 10, He said, You don't understand what you're talking about. He says, I have other sheep that are not of this sheep pen, and I must bring them also. They too will listen to my voice, and there shall be one flock and one shepherd. So, for all the Christians out there who think that because you know, you don't wear a long dress or you, know, you don't wear a sleeveless or you clean your hair or 
humanity out of the two, thus making peace. And in one body, to reconcile both of them to God through the cross, by which he put to death their hospitality. He came and preached peace to you who were far away, and peace to those who were near. For through him, we both have access to the Father by one spirit. That is the good news, brothers and sisters. Jesus Christ is our peace. And do not let Satan use people to rob you of that peace. Because he's going to do that. And he will try to let you feel that you can garner peace in this area, that area. They are searching in all the wrong places. But Jesus Christ reminds us that he is our peace. He's not just peace. He's not just, he has not just broken down the wall of um, um, hostility and brought peace to us. The scripture says that he is our peace. So once we have Jesus Christ, we will have peace. Amen? Amen. So may the Lord bless you, the Lord keep you, the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord turn his face towards you and give you peace. Let us pray. Holy Righteous Holy Father, we thank you so very much that despite the turmoil that we are experiencing in and around us, where we can't seem to find any peace, we are always filled with fear. We thank you that you have revealed Jesus Christ, our peace to us. And he has reminded us that he has broken down that wall of hostility that had separated us from you. And he has now created in us, a new man, a man that should be filled with hope, a hope that we are now able to enjoy, even from now, enjoy in that in your presence, there is full of joy, and as you write in your presence forever. Help us, Father, that you, not to be looking at the negative things around us. But let us look to Jesus Christ, who is the author and the finisher of our faith. We pray for those persons who, because of the life that they have been living, be, be hostile to the gospel of grace, that he will soften their hearts, that he will truly prick their hearts to let them realize that without Jesus Christ, they are nothing. And continue to empower us, Father that we may, our feet will truly be fitting with the gospel of peace so that we can go out there and share this little hope that we are now experiencing to those who are out there in darkness. We thank you. We thank you. We thank you, Father, for what you have done. And that is why we place you on the highest place in our lives. Because we know that there is no other God but you. We know that it is in you that we live, that we move, and that we have our being. And that you will withhold no good thing from us. We pray at this time for those who have relatives or friends who are suffering from health issues, who are struggling to pay their mortgages because they have no job. We pray, Father, my dear, for your know, children who are so vulnerable. We pray that you will see the need in their lives, that you will surely bring peace to them, Father, that their situations will turn around, that they will surely realize that it is you, Father, that has made their lives one that is now filled with joy and everlasting peace. So we just place each and every individual in this world in your hands. And we look forward to the day when Jesus Christ will return to set up your kingdom here on earth. So that not just in our lives will your will be done, but it will be done through the whole of your creation. We look forward to that day rejoicing because we know that it is done already. So we just bless you, we praise you, we magnify you, and we just say thanks. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
Amen. Amen. God bless you all.